Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to be comparing the Ryzen 5 9600X against the Ryzen 7600X and the Ryzen 7500F. Now these CPUs uh, are the entry level essentially for AM5 but these by no means are considered entry level CPUs when you compare it to other one, like other CPUs that are out there such as the 5600X or the 12100, 12400 from, uh, from Intel. These are more in line to be a mid-range CPU, especially the cost of the 9600X that is mid-range territory and that is not entry level uh, territory pricing. The 7500F is getting a little closer to the entry level but it's still a pricey CPU considering you can't even get it in North America you need to order it um, across the pond from AliExpress. So recently AMD has dropped the price of the 9600X from about $280 down to $249. That makes a big difference as far as trying to decide on which CPU you want to get based on price to performance because this makes it a lot more competitive than what it was before. $30 might not seem like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, that's over a 10% um, drop in price for the CPU, especially considering it's only been out for two months. Now, like I was saying, the 9600 is now $249. The 7600X comes in at around $200, and if you want to try your luck with AliExpress, which I've had luck, uh, pretty good luck with them so far, you can get a 7500F for about $132. So pretty much half the price of a 9600X. These are all six core, 12 thread CPUs with various different uh, base and boost clock speeds. The 7500F comes in at the lowest with a 3.7 gigahertz base clock speed, whereas the 7600X actually comes in with the highest uh, base clock speed at 4.7 gigahertz. For the turbo, for single core, the 9600X comes in at 5.4 gigahertz, then it's 5.3 gigahertz for the 7600X, and the 7500F is the lowest at 5 gigahertz. And then when you're looking at um, turbo across all cores, uh, which is kind of weird, the 7600X comes in with 5.3 gigahertz, whereas the 9600X only comes in at 4.9 gigahertz. And then the 7500F is 4.4 gigahertz. One of the things that makes the 7500F cheaper than the rest is it doesn't have the integrated graphics that the other two have. These two both have uh, two RDNA cores in it, which for gaming, you're not gonna be able to do much with it, but it is nice to have for troubleshooting or things like that. So to do a quick summary before we start getting into all of the benchmarks, the 9600X, when it comes to synthetic benchmarks and product productivity benchmarks beats quite handily the 7600X and the 7500F. Uh, there is a pretty big performance boost um, generation over generation with the 9600X compared to the other two which in some instances does make the extra cost worthwhile. However, if you're um, an average user doing this for some productivity work, but mainly for gaming, that's where the um, the the decision on whether to go with the 9600X over something a little bit cheaper kind of gets a little more um, difficult to make because in gaming, in certain situations, yes, the 9600X does perform better, but for the most part, it is pretty comparable um, for performance across the board. We're talking in certain situations a couple of percent to almost no difference whatsoever and that mainly boils down to what GPU you're going to be using and what resolution you're going to be gaming in. So my test, um, I'll have all the uh, specs down below in the video. However, I'm doing my testing with a 4070 Ti which is a good 1440p um, graphics card and struggles a little bit at 4k but really has um, really good performance at 1080p but really shines at the 1440p mark and 
depending on which graphics card you're looking at using, you can kind of gauge whether you're going to get better or poor performance. But pretty much at 1440p or higher with the 4070 Ti, they the performance difference between the three CPUs is pretty negligible. So starting off with Cinebench R23 single core, we are seeing some pretty uh, pretty good performance increases over each one of the CPUs. The 7600X is 7% better than the 7500F, and then the 9600X is 12% better than the 7600X. And then same kind of story when you look at multi-core. The 7600X is only 3% better than the 7500F, but the 9600X is 16% better than the 7600X. And then moving on to Geekbench, single core, we're seeing a 12% increase from the 7500 to the 7600X, but then we're seeing another 11% increase when you go from the 7600X up to the 9600X. For multi-core, we're seeing a little bit of the same thing. However, oddly in my testing, the 7600X is 20% better than the 7500F, and then the 9600X is only 8% better than 7600X. Moving on to Blender, where we ran Classroom, Junk Shop, and Monster. Again, we're seeing the 7600X perform around 8 to 12% better. Uh, the 7600X is performing about 8 to 12% better than the 7500F across all the different uh, benchmarks that were ran. And the 9600X is performing about 15 to 18% better than the 7600X. Going on to 7-zip, where lower is better, the 9600X is 3% faster than the 7600X, and the 7600X is 12% faster than the 7500F. On to the Corona benchmark, uh, Corona 10 benchmark, the 7600X performs about 9% better than the 7500F, and the 9600X performs 25% better than the 7600X. The last one I tested for uh, performance benchmarks was DaVinci Resolve, and the 7600X performed 11% better than the 7500F, and the 9600X only performed 8% better than the 7500F. So looking at the synthetic benchmarks, uh, the performance to price is fairly tight, especially when you look at the 7500F to the 9600X, where we're having all, where we're seeing almost double the price for the 9600X. We're only seeing if you add the performances together between 20 and 30 percent better performance out of the 9600X over the 7500F in certain situations, not in all. And this is very specific in productivity related workloads where the pieces of software are actually able to use all of the cores. And that isn't always the case in when we move on to gaming. So moving on to our gaming benchmarks, we're gonna start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And all of the preset, presets I've used throughout all the games have been the highest preset that you can get. Ray tracing was not used and neither was any sort of upscaling. For the most part, Shadow of the Tomb Raider kind of is an outlier for what we're going to see with some of the other games and because it came out a little later in, uh, or it came out a while ago and it's not as GPU intensive as some of the other games that we're going to be looking at. So this does come down to CPU and if that CPU can keep up with the frame rates that the GPU is trying to put out. And in this case, the 7500F fell behind quite considerably. We're looking at an average of 190 FPS compared to the 7600X at 250 FPS, which is a big jump. And then it's a little bit smaller of a jump going up to the 9600X at 270 FPS. And that's also the same when you're looking at the 1% lows. The 7500F was at 115, it jumps up to 141 with the 7600X, and then 151 with the 9600X. So there's a, not as big of a gap going from a 7600X to the 9600X, and that pretty much boils down to the game can't utilize all the cores efficiently, so the actual like, benchmark, 
uh, performance that we're seeing is in translating over into gaming performance. So the 7600X or 9600X is less than 10% better than the 7600X at 1080p. And then we move on to 1440p and to 4K. The difference between the 9600X and the 7600X is pretty much gone. Um, except there were, I ran this a few times and it seems to be a glitch in the game or something like that, I don't know, but at 1440p we are getting an average or a 1% low of 165 FPS, FPS with the 9600X. However, the 7600X is at 143 and those are both higher than the 1% low for 1080p. And then at 1440p, the 7500F trails behind both those um, quite a bit still, but then when we move on to 4K, um, there is uh, no difference whatsoever between essentially the three CPUs except for the 1% low on the 7500F. But this, the 4K is also a good example of this is very a CPU bound game, not GPU bound, because at 4K we're still getting 116 FPS. Now moving on to Assassin's Creed at 1080p, again the 7500F trails a little bit behind the 7600 and the 9600X, however not as much as with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So we're only 12 FPS behind the 7600X, uh, 1% or for the average, and we are about 20, uh, no, 10 FPS behind on the 1% low. And then when you compare the 7600X to the 9600X, the variances for the average are, there is no variance, and there's a 5 FPS difference on the 1% low. And then moving on to 1440p, there is no difference um, whatsoever across the board. But when we get into 4K, we do see a little bit of a variance where the 9600X does perform better, but not by much compared to the 7600X or the 7500F. Now we're getting into some more GPU intensive games uh, like Cyberpunk 2077. And at 1080p, the 9600X and the 7600X are essentially have essentially no difference and the 7500F isn't too far behind at 149 FPS and 93 for the 1% low. But if you again using the GPU and the resolution that is essentially intended to be used which is 1440p the 9600X does pull a little bit ahead of the 9600X with 97 FPS on average versus the 94 for the 7600X and a 68 1% low versus the 66 1% low. Uh, the 7500F does perform a little bit behind at uh, a 1% low of 61. But then when you move on to 4K, everything evens out to be the same. So Black Myth Wukong that just came out this, uh, this summer, so not too long ago, at 1080p, it's, you can see it's a very GPU intensive game where the 9600X and the 7600X have essentially the same performance and the 7500F is just a little bit behind at 75 FPS for the average and 58 for the 1% low. And then when you look at 1440p and 4K, there is no difference between three CPUs. Hogwarts Legacy, uh, pretty demanding game still and you can see that in the performance where the 9600X at 1080p is better at the on average than the 7600X from 131 down to 125. The 1% lows are pretty identical and then the 7500F is uh, trailing behind a little bit at 105 FPS for the average versus and um, 49 for the 1% low. Moving on to 1440p, the 9600X still has a little bit of a lead over the 7600X. Uh, but not by much, and the 7500F is um, right behind there as well at 91 FPS on average and 42 for the 1% low. But then we move on to 4K, um, there's essentially no difference between the three CPUs. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, again 1080p we're not seeing much of a difference, especially on um, the average FPS. The 96 100X is at 114 FPS, which is only three above the 7600 and the 7500F. And the 1% lows 
Um, the 9600X and 7600X are identical, but the 7500F does trail behind a little bit at 78. And then again, looking at 1440p and 4K, everything is essentially identical. Jedi, uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the 9600X and 7600X are pretty identical on the average. Uh, the 1% low, the 7600X, it does trail behind it a bit at 80 versus 87. And then the 7500F is uh, 116 for the average, which is a little bit behind the 7600X and 9600X. However, it does struggle a little bit more on the 1% low. However, that 1% low um, still isn't, it's, it's uh, about 10% lower than the 7600X. Looking at the 1440p, uh, everything is pretty much identical. However, the 9600X on the 1% low does perform a little bit better at 64 versus 60 for the rest. And then moving on to 4K, everything is essentially identical. Moving on to Starfield, the 7600X and 9600X perform, again, pretty much the same. The 7600X is a couple FPS lower on the 1% low. Uh, looking at the 7500F, it is a little bit um, poorer performance than the 7600X and 9600X. We're sitting at an average of 90 FPS and a 1% low of 47. Then moving on to 1440p, the 9600X, 7600X still identical, and then the 7500F does trail behind there a little bit with the 1% low of 46 and the average of 77. And that kind of continues on when we get to 4K, where the 1% low on the 7500F is a little bit lower at 33, but everything else is relatively the same across the three CPUs. And there you have it. For the most part, uh, the 9600X does not perform significantly better than the 7600X. Um, especially at 1440p, the 9600X doesn't, well, with the 4070Ti, at 1440p, the 9600X doesn't seem to be worth the extra price of 50 bucks over the 7600X. But then you have the 7500F where you do get a little bit poorer performance, um, even at 1440p, but it is half the price than the 9600X and it's about 50% cheaper than the um, 7600X. And some of my previous videos I have uh, hinted that this is one of my favorite CPUs as far as if you plan on doing a budget or even a mid-range build the 7500F gets you into the AM5 platform for a fairly decent price and it has great performance for what you pay. So across the board don't get hyped on always having the best or the latest and greatest because depending on where you're using it for you're not going to see any of that improvement. Personally, I would go with the 7500F, save the $120, $130, and put that towards getting an upgrade on your GPU. Especially for gaming, the performance demand is more GPU than it is CPU, so these should still last you well into the future, and being able to afford a better GPU will last you further into the future and allow you to play um, AAA games with great frame rates longer than having a better CPU with your GPU. Anyway, if you have any questions or comment, please leave them down below, and I'd really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel.